I believe we all have seen even death will take my numbers. Don't you really worry about it. Great quote here from a brilliant uh, British author, and it reminded me of, do you remember in the 80s when, uh, before we had that, that lump of uh, glass and metal in your pocket, we all had fire faxes that listed every name of every number of everyone we ever knew. Um, and just a little bit of audience participation here. Hold up your hands if you know your home telephone number without looking at your phone. Come on. Okay, less than I thought. Keep your hand held up if you know your wife, husband, your significant other's mobile number without looking. Okay, much, much less. <laughs> And keep it held up if you know your best friend's home phone number. Okay, we're down to two, one person. So that, that demonstrates to me um, why telephone numbers are just not so important anymore. Um, I'm sorry, Liz, I've stolen some of your graphics and stats here, but uh, you know, over the last um, eight, nine years, we've seen minutes on fixed lines drop from uh, 103 billion down to 54 billion minutes. And um, of the 38 million fixed lines in the, in the UK, in January this year, Ofcom said that they've seen a downward trend in, the, in their usage. Now, that sort of jars a little bit because I know that uh, they're about to release new numbers for London, but what you're seeing a lot of is where people have fixed lines at home just to carry ADSL services because, as someone said earlier, you know, broadband is, is not fit for purpose in most places, uh, but it is the only way to get semi-fast internet, especially in rural areas. But why do we even have telephone numbers? And the simple answer is convenience. And uh, again, I've quoted Liz here from, from the Upcom website about um, numbers and their usage. You know, back in uh, the 1870s, there's a little bit of history lesson here for the millennials. I mean, us from the uh, Generation X and Baby Boomers don't understand why they're, they're here at all, but uh, the, the millennials won't understand this. But, Back in uh, the 1870s, when um, Graham Bell first launched his um, exchange in London, there was a few hundred subscribers, and they could just have telephone operators there, and you say, I want to speak to Fred Knox, and he'd then they'd probably whip out a call and plug him in. By the onset of World War I, that had grown to half a million subscribers in the UK. So they had to start breaking down the numbers into different area codes. And in 1958, they then launched STD, which my millennial staff thought was some sort of transmitted disease, um, <laughs> not subscribe to Trump dying. Um, that, by, by the early 70s, that was fully implemented, and we ended up with this, this strange system where you could dial a white call 1212 or um, Tunbridge 2408. And I, I still remember, um, as a child, my, my old auntie answering the phone, Bromford 41589, that's how people used to answer the phone. And this was mentioned earlier by Liz, you know, there was a, a numbering scheme where the first two letters of the town where you lived actually dictated the code. So Brentwood, 0277, uh, BR, Chelmsford, 0245, BH, and so on. But are the use of fixed lines actually um, becoming irrelevant? They're becoming less and less uh, used within the household. I mean, I look at our hub phone and there's maybe two people that phone us. The in-laws and that little Indian guy who swears blindly from BT and needs to reboot my router. And they're, they're the only two people that ever phone me. But the actual use of telephone minutes has been vastly replaced. We saw in the earlier slide about that uh, as the calls were going down, so data was going up. Because everyone's using FaceTime and WhatsApp and Facebook chat and Skype for business and all of these different uh, IP-based technologies. And ultimately, I think that all of these traditional fixed line services will be replaced by some sort of voice over IP or SIP type implementation. And it makes sense. Why would you have a pair of copper wires coming to a fixed point in a building when you could have seamless integration and walk around? You know, the dream of what mobile communications was supposed to be, but has never quite been implemented. And taking one of the uh, audience's comments earlier, I guess I just switched to the E in the vain hope that I might get more than one bar in my little rural village where I live. But what if you don't know the, the name of the person? You know, if we get rid of telephone numbers, how are you going to get rid of them? How are you going to be able to contact these people? 
Well, you're already doing it. I mean, when was the last time you looked up someone's number? You don't. You just put up your phone, scroll down, and press send. WhatsApp has, um, you know, obfuscated the numbers altogether, so it just shows the name. If it already knows who they are, you don't even see the mobile number. It, it's just used for authentication. And so ultimately, I think that the social networks could end up taking over and becoming the, the global directory. And you know, you could this could be rolled into um, you know, some sort of um, validated directory set that's transmitted between every carrier. Um, who knows? And my final point here is there is one more slide, think, but my final point was why you shouldn't care. You have no need for address books, so you're in an always connected world. Whenever you pick up the phone, um, you don't pick up your, your mobile, you already know if they're online or not because they've got a little green tick next to them to tell you they're available. Most of the time you're sending them a text message or an instant uh, message anyway, and you get a far more immediate response. And with the way businesses are moving into this omnichannel environment, and again, that was touched on earlier, um, it's a far more gratifying instant response. You know, you send an instant message through an instant chat on a website, or you tweet about it because you want to be passive aggressive about why your electricity company is not doing their job. So rather than actually speak to someone or sit in a queue for 40 minutes, you just tweet um, a psyche comment and then someone comes back to you straight away because they're worried about their public persona. So ultimately, I think telephone numbers will disappear, but they will become. Um, they won't disappear entirely. Much in the same way that um, you don't know what the IP address for Google is, you type google.com, but there's an IP address underlying it. And telephone numbers may still exist at an obfuscated, you know, a hidden layer, joining all the, and stitching all of the tapestry of communications together, but from a user perspective, will become transient and disappear. And we've already seen the, the death in of telephone numbers anyway. When was the last time anyone even looked at a telephone directory? I remember the fanfare when 118 and all of the myriad suppliers came online. I can't remember the last time I even thought about dialing 118. The new 118 is Google, isn't it? You just go to Google and say, my local car salesman or, or tire place, and he just comes up with a list of them. So, whilst I believe you can still get to the phone directory, um, you know, they've, they've disappeared. And a lot of the businesses around them, like you know, the Yellow Page, is sort of shrunk and become just online presences. So that's ultimately why I think we don't need telephone numbers anymore. This is my uh, Mystic Meg moment where I, there's some other things that I think are gonna hit us in the next 10 years. I think that a whole idea of telephone systems, PBXs, are gonna be consigned to the same fate as VHS recorders and mini discs. Yeah, it was a nice idea at the time, it suited a purpose back then, but. Um, they're just going to disappear because they, we're ultimately going to have maybe three providers left Microsoft, Cisco, incorporating Broadsoft and maybe one other. Um, or if you are running a PBX, it's just going to be a soft one based on asterisk or something similar. The phone numbers, as I said, they will still exist, but they're going to be hidden away beneath, beneath the waters where you can't see them, much in the same way IP addresses are. So, as a user, you won't need to know them. The engineering departments will need to know them to stitch your system together in the same way they need to know SIP addresses in order to stitch together IP communications. And once 5G actually happens, and the talk is that you know, there'll be a 5G transmitter on the end of every telephone, uh, every uh, telegraph pole, and every lamppost, and every street, once you've got 5G ubiquitously rolled out or its successors, then you don't need that piece of copper going to your house anymore. So those you know, 38 million fixed lines suddenly disappear because they're just no longer needed. You'll have single fibers going into enterprises and everyone else will just be working wirelessly. So there you go, that's my mystic make view of the future. Um, happy to be uh, contradicted on any of it. Would you like to take some questions? <laughs> Is there any questions? Uh, I think very easy. Uh, yeah. um, uh, I obviously agree with some of your slide, but sorry, no, that's okay. Um, I agree with some of the slides, but we really disagree on some of these other areas. I mean, if you're talking uh, C to C, agree. If you're talking business, um, in in some ways, you know what people forget is the voice minute was always going to 
lose market share because up to 15 years ago, it was really the only way people communicated, apart from by letter. So it's the only real time mechanism to communicate. So obviously we've had other, we've got other mechanisms now, um, but and something and the sources for courses. But you know, I as an individual wouldn't, for example, want to live my whole life on instant message. Um, you know, the whole thing around monitoring people, seeing what people are doing. You know, when you're working remote teams, the ability to talk to each other across the phone, which maybe wasn't there so much going back 20 years. That, that isn't out there now. You know, the use of conference bridge. You know, really, do we need video on conference bridge? I'd argue not, not most of the time. But actually talking and screen sharing, really important, yeah? So I think what's happening, it was all, voice was always gonna come off its peak. Um, but there's always gonna be a need for voice and this within the business environment, the whole control of and understanding what's happening in your business just as it's important to you know, measure a chat queue, it's important to know what the voice is. So mm -hmm. I, th I think, yeah. Do I respond? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're absolutely right. Um, however, I mean, I just take my typical week. I probably have maybe 20, 30 calls. Not one of those have I used a telephone number because I'm just using Skype for business. The conferences that you talk about, so the, the desktop sharing, the video comp, the collab, all done through Skype or Teams. And with, um, yeah, when everyone starts using those same technologies, there is no need for a, a telephone number anymore. You'll just connect to someone via their email address. So, you know, I, I instantiate meetings with BC, with Vodafone, with all of our other customers and channels using email as the starting point to say, oh, let's have a chat then on Wednesday at one o'clock with bridge details. But it isn't like they're dialing a bridge, they just click on the link, it opens up the relevant app, and you know, up, other, other products to apply, you know, you could use Zoom or you could use um, Cisco. And of course, Cisco are doing this as well. They're taking their Broadsoft app um, that they've just acquired, they're blending it into their hosted offering. So you can have Cisco WebEx Voice, which is essentially, again, blurring the lines. So I'm not suggesting that voice doesn't have a role in the future. I'm just saying the way that we get to that voice is completely different. We don't have the phone numbers anymore. It will be email addresses or just active directory links. The basis of time, I, I will leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any more questions? Uh, well, one of the observations I like to make if you think 5G is going to be the way uh, domestic or com uh, consumer is going to be serviced, then that's going to be a huge problem for this community in the sense that if you think that's going to be the connectivity, because as we talked about earlier, 5G is going to be rolled out by the mobile communities and they're less. Oh, yeah. I just say it's a light hearted comment. Yeah, well, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think thank you very much, Paul. That's very kind of you. Thank you.